Good morning and welcome to your walkthrough of this new Dutch Star. This is a 2024 4369 floor plan. We're going to start here at the front of the coach. And uh, if you look up near the top, near the marker lights, you'll see a camera at the very top. That is a 360 degree view camera. Uh, just below that, uh, behind the windshield wiper here, is the mobile eye camera. Uh, to view your lane and help you with lane mitigation issues. Um, as you come over to this side of the coach, you'll notice that you've got your headlights, turn signals, and fog lights. At the front of the coach, uh, we mount the uh, license plate, if you have one, just to the right of the radar sensor here. We're gonna open the front hood latch uh, so we can view the inside. Come around here. Since we open this door, we'll see a lever here. This latch opens the front hood. Pull that, it releases. We just grab a hold and lift. And the air shocks hold it open. So moving over here, uh, to the driver's side of the firewall after we open the front hood latch. We can see starting on the side here, we get our air horns, our dual air horns. Uh, just beside that, we have our hot water spigot. So we can attach a hose onto here and have hot water uh, by opening this spigot. Um, the spigot has a drain uh, that you can use to winterize. That drain is just to the rear, uh, there's a uh, valve that you can open to drain it and then close to use it. Just to the right of that is your fuel filter for the hydronic water heating uh, for the ITR Oasis. Uh, this filter needs to be changed uh, yearly. Just above that is our compressed airline uh, we can connect <clears throat> an air hose to this. The air hose uh, will then uh, use the air that's in the chassis tanks. Uh, you can use this to air up your tires or any other um, uh, thing that you have to have air added to. Just to the right of that, we have our, our generator. Our generator start-stop switch is here. The breaker for the generator has to be turned in the up or on position to have the generator power go into the coach. So this, has, this breaker has to be up or in the on position. To manually start the generator from this position or the outside, you can see here where it says start and stop. So we just press this button down and you'll notice the light illuminate as it preheats and primes and then it will start to turn the generator off when we're finished, we can do it manually right here. We can check our fluid levels here. Uh, this tells you uh, the mix that it should be. If we want to open this slide, then we have to pull this release handle here, and that gets our gen slide out. Just above uh, the generator, we have our light on off. Uh, this is our Bergstrom air conditioning and heating for the cockpit area. Uh, these are the drain lines uh, for when we're operating this system. Just down uh, below this, we see our uh, hydraulic pump and reservoir for the jacks. And uh, we can see our pressure switch and our filter line dryer for the air conditioning system there. When we're finished uh, servicing this area or looking at whatever is up front here, we want to close the hood, just simply pull down and the hood will latch here. Uh, just to give you a quick demo of the lights, I'll go inside turn the lights on, bright, dim, 
and you'll be able to see the marker lights along with the turn signals and the fog lights come on. Okay, so I'm in the coach now and I'm gonna turn on the headlights. We can uh, turn on the fog lights and off and we can then turn on our bright and dim. So turn on our left and right turn signal. You have to have the key engaged and the ignition on. And you can see our turn signal is on for left turn and right turn. There's our bright and our dim. Okay, so starting at the door side, uh, we've got our mirror. This mirror is adjustable from the inside with the power mirror. Uh, that, if there's not enough rotation that you, you can't get the view right, you can adjust the arm or you can adjust the mirror here at the ball socket by loosening the Allen head screw here and making that adjustment here. If that's not enough adjustment or you wanna have the view a little bit further out, you can take this uh, plug out and get to the nut and bolt here, loosen it, and then you can adjust your arm here uh, and then put that back. Um, just below the mirror here is your side view turn signal uh, camera. So when you turn on your right turn signal, this camera automatically comes on so you can view this lane. Uh, below that is your marker light. Um, if you look all the way at the top there above the door, that's your Girard awning. That's a 120 volt power motor. Uh, you can operate that from the inside overhead above the driver's steering wheel, um, or you can operate it manually. So if I was going to operate it manually, uh, this crank is provided in your coach. You just insert it here. And then you can turn the awning open or closed. So in the event of uh, power loss or motor failure, you can still um, open or close the awning as needed. Uh, just below the awning is the patio light. The patio light, when it's turned on, also turns on the light inside the step well of the first step. As we open the door, you notice the steps will come out when the door is open and then they retract when the door is closed. Uh, that operation is done with a series of magnetic switches. When the magnetic switches line up, the steps close. I can override the steps closing and leave the steps out so they stay extended if I like. Uh, there's a step switch in the overhead and we'll show that a little bit later when we go into the overhead. I can lock and unlock the door manually from the inside or the outside. If I'm on the outside of the coach, I use the keys labeled Trimark. So a Trimark key for the deadbolt is at the top. So I can lock my deadbolt from the outside. And the smaller key labeled Trimark would be for the door handle lock, lock and unlock. Now I can do those manually from the inside if I like right here is the door lock and or the deadbolt lock here. There is also a key fob. The key fob will automatically open and close the door handle latch, but not the deadbolt. So I can lock and unlock the entrance door here and un unlock there. This key fob also operates 
the baggage compartment doors are cargo locks here and unlock there. If I don't have uh, my set of keys with me, uh, but I still want to unlock or lock the coach, I can do that here with the Numar handle. The door handle is a power lock. The power lock code that comes with your coach is 123441. And that locks, unlocks the coach. We can close the door and demonstrate that if the door is locked. We would just enter that code one, two, three, four, four, one, and that unlocks the door. To relock the door and the baggage compartments, you just press number one and hold it for a second. You can hear the door lock and then the baggage compartments locked. Then again, just repeat to unlock. The code is one, two, three, four, four, one, and that unlocks. There is a doorbell function here um, for your guests. Just press the doorbell and that rings the doorbell. The code that comes, the code that we just used to unlock the door will need to be changed uh, when you become the owner. Uh, to change that code, there is a switch on the side of the steering column that you press and then you'll get a series of tones when you hear the tones, then you would enter your new code, which is a five digit code. After you enter it, you'll hear another tone and you enter it a second time. Once you enter that code the second time, you have your own private code to lock and unlock the, co the coach. So uh, that will need to be done once you are the owner of the coach. If you look at the inside steps going up into the coach, there are additional storage compartments on both steps. There is also at the top step, a platform that comes out and raises up. The step cover makes so that when you're in the coach and traveling, you can actually have this floor come out so you can stand um, on this area or as you're traveling, your legs won't be hanging down. I'll demonstrate that. So again, it's called the step cover switch. So now when I close the door, I can be standing here uh, at the same level as the rest of the coach. Uh, to retract it, just use the same step cover switch. And it stores back into position. The entrance door and the screen door are together now, but I can unlock the screen door from the main door just by pressing down. Now I can close the screen door and leave the main door open if I like. Let's close here. Now the screen here is permanent, but there is a screen above that you can pull down. So I'd want to have this down if I want to have a totally screened in door. This can be, uh, you can slide that either way. If you're on the inside, and you press down on the lever inside, it presses and unlocks the door here so you can open and close it from the inside or out. When you close the main entrance door, there are two latches or levers that grab the door. The first one is just a soft close that you could use when you're parked and you're going in and out of the coach often. You can just close the door softly and it latches in the first latch only. You can see there's a small gap, so it's not actually closed all the way, but it's closed far enough to latch. If you're going to travel with the coach, you wanna have it in the second latch so that you would have to close the door a little bit more firmly. Now we're in the second latch. 
you can see the door is flush with the trim here. So just remember for traveling, you wanna make sure it's in that second latch and you'll have to close it firm. So moving back behind the steps, if you look back towards the front of the wheel well, on the frame rail, there are two steel loops. Those steel loops are called lanyards. Those lanyards uh, should be uh, grabbed a hold of and pulled. And what that does is it releases the moisture out of the air tank, the uh, air tank that's in the chassis for the front. So if you can't reach that, your arm's not long enough, you can actually use the, the awning rod or another device, just grab a hold and pull each one of the lanyards and that's gonna release a little bit of air and the moisture out of your air system. You wanna keep the air uh, free of moisture and that's how you do it. I would suggest you do that uh, at least uh, before you take your coach on uh, drive. Looking at the, the hub here, Numar provides the uh, unlock mechanism here for the hub. You can turn this counterclockwise and access your hub here. This is the air fill. You have to take this cap off to check your air pressure and or add pressure to the tire. Uh, the ratings here and also on a, on a decal that Newmar puts right behind the driver's seat. The fuel fill door is the same on both sides of the coach. Either fuel fill goes to the same tank. Just rotate it counterclockwise, fill, and then clockwise until it clicks. When you're finished, just close the door. Below the fuel tank fill is a marker light. Above our fuel cap and door is the window awning. The switch is in the overhead above the driver's seat. When you extend it, obviously it opens and will stop the extension by itself if you release or if you just continue to hold the switch down, it continues to open all the way and it will shut off automatically when it reaches its full extension point. After you're ready to stow it, just go back in the overhead, hit the retract switch. Hold the, you have to hold the button down until the awning closes all the way and then you can release the button. But it won't hurt to just continue to hold the button down until it's fully closed. The awning that's above the window awning is attached to the slide room. When the slide room opens, that's a slide topper awning. The slide topper awning automatically opens because it's attached to the slide room. And we're gonna open the slide room now. Before you open any slide room on a Newmark coach, you wanna check and make sure that the gap or the space between the Z trim and the fascia is equal. Uh, this is called re a reveal. So the gap of the reveal should be about three eighths of an inch on both sides. And you wanna make sure that the coach is aired up on the air ride before you open the slide room. So start your coach, make sure it's on air, and then you would open your slide room. So I'm gonna go inside and we'll open that slide room. Okay, so our slide room is open now. If you look at the top, you can see the slide topper awning opened above it to keep the uh, rain or debris from falling on top of the slide room. Before you close the slide room, you wanna make sure and look at both ends that there is no debris um, or any uh, branches that might've got underneath the slide room while you were parked, perhaps under a tree. 
After you check and make sure that there's nothing in the way of the slide room at the base or sides or top, then you can retract it. You have to hold the in button in the overhead and you have to hold the button down to make it cycle all the way back in. You'll notice that there are two small bars at the bottom corners of the slide out. These, when they're all the way in, uh, depress and close and they lock the room so it's locked in the in position. They automatically unlock when it goes out. So the small arm that we just mentioned at the bottom or base of each corner of the slide out actuates this lever to go up and presses against here to hold or lock your room from any travel as you go down the road. So these rotate up and stay and keep the room locked while you're traveling. So you get this small white box which contains the Gerard remote control for your awnings. So the remote control can be used outside the coach. You have to unlock the remote here. So if we unlock the remote, we get zero, which means that we're going to control both awnings at the same time. If you only want to control one awning or the other, then you can choose which, which channel. So if I switch channels from zero to one, number one is the front awning, number two is the rear. If I change the channel again to zero, that means both awnings being controlled at the same time with this control. So since I'm set at zero, I'm gonna open both awnings at the same time by pressing out. If I need to stop the awnings before they come all the way out, if I'm too close to uh, another coach or trees, whatever, I can hit stop and that stops both awnings. I can continue going out just by pressing the out button again. If the awnings are open, and I need additional light. There is a, uh, there is an LED light strip on each one of these awnings. I can press the LED light switch here. And since it's set to zero, both of the light strips will come on. To turn them back off, I just depress that light switch again and my LED lights go out. Each awning has a wind sensor, which is actually a motion sensor. If the awning starts to move too much uh, in the wind, they will automatically retract as long as you are connected to 120 volt power supply, either shore core generator or you have your inverter turned on. So that would look like this. If the awning starts to move too much in the wind, it will activate the, the sensor and the awning will retract. I'll stop the awning again. Okay, once uh, the wind sensor or the motion sensor retracts the awning, 
uh, you won't be able to stop it until it goes all the way into full retraction and then you can reopen it. So go back to our channel selection here. Um, we have to unlock because it was in L mode, so we unlock it and now we can run it out. Another device that Gerard sends with the awning in this uh, envelope is a steel Allen rod, Allen shaped rod. If for any reason you lose power and you need to retract the awnings manually, you can insert this rod in the top of either awning from the roof. So you would have to get on the roof, insert this at the center position, right here or here at the top of either one of these awnings. And then you would rotate this manually or with a cordless drill and you can run the awnings in or back out. So this tool um, is in with your accessories for the Girard awning. If you look at the top center on each motor, there is an adjustment for the amount that the awning would open and close. And those two screws are the white and the red sensors and the arrow for direction of control is indicated on each one. So if you needed the awning to come, uh, to go out slightly further or not as far, you can make those adjustments on the white or the red screw for either awning. And that's also an Allen head screw. So at our first compartment door, we have our basement freezer. Uh, it's a Dometic basement freezer that operates on either 12 volt or 120 volt. Those plugs are inserted here to power up the refrigerator freezer. This is the 12 volt plug, that's the 120 volt plug. This is on a GFCI circuit, so if you don't have 120 volt here, check your GFCI circuits. If you uh, don't have 120 volt, the refrigerator will automatically switch over to 12 volt here. So let's take a look at the freezer. You can also connect this with the uh, Dometic app, and then you can control um, the freezer via Bluetooth uh, right here. Um, oh, you can connect uh, the freezer through the Bluetooth app, and you can turn the refrigerator freezer up or down with the app. This is a USB port. Uh, this is your temperature control up and down. You can also scroll through here on your setup uh, for Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. This is the refrigerated side. This is the freezer side. Just refer to your Dometic manual for more information on that. Uh, our next compartment, we have our slide tray. And you'll notice that we've included some floor tile in case you get a damaged floor tile. Numar includes the same tiles that were used originally in your coach so they match as close as possible to the original lot number of those tile. In between the frame rails, you, you'll see a white inverter. The inverter has breakers that in case a breaker is tripped, um, you can go up inside the frame rail and reset those breakers uh, manually. 
You'll notice here on um, the door, there's a magnetic switch. Uh, since our LED light strip is on, um, when this magnet touches the magnetic switch or is close to it, it will turn these lights off automatically. In our next baggage door compartment, we have a lot of open space here. Um, these ABS covers um, are removable. Um, they actually uh, are protecting the motor and gear assembly for the slide room. In our next door back, we have the road vac system. The road vac system has all the accessories here. You can either connect the vacuum outside here to sweep outside, or you can take it inside and use the accessories inside. To do that, you would open the bag, and this is the handle that operates the vac. We want to make sure that the bag is inserted uh, before we use the vac to turn the system on and off is just a simple press of the button here. If you need help with operation, uh, there's a QR code that you can scan, but all the accessories are in the bag. And we'll demonstrate that a little bit more when we go inside. You'll notice here, there are two long steel screws. In the event that you had a slide room, uh, the main slide room, which is hydraulically operated, if there was an issue where the slide room would not move and you need it retracted, these screws can be inserted on the opposite side and that room is then moved by turning these screws and closing the room. So that's what these are for. On the frame rail mounted there um, is your splitter uh, for your TVs, um, uh, your swim system. This is your slide room for the bedroom controller. Um, operates the slide room in and out. Uh, these are the two plugs that come down here that power up uh, the controls for the Girard awnings front and rear and we have additional 120 volt outlet here that's GFCI protected. If you look up in the right hand corner, you see two small solenoids connected to a longer um, hydraulic cylinder. That is called the sink cylinder, which operates your slide room in and out. One's the extend, one's the uh, retract solenoid. You can manually turn your inner vac on right here with the on-off switch. And to replace the bag, um, you, you insert your hose here to replace the bag. Uh, we're not gonna, yeah. You just grab a hold and pull out and you can change your bag. Um, the two, these uh, are the Girard awning controls. The Girard awning controls um, have the remote, which we showed you uh, earlier. Um, you can also operate the Girard awnings from the overhead at the driver's seat. But if you want to operate them out here, there's three switches at the very bottom here. You can feel the switches uh, extend and retract and the button in the middle is stop. So I can press that button and I can uh, close the awning, I can stop it, and then I can open it back up with the other button to go out. So I can do it manually here with the remote or in the driver overhead. In the next baggage door, 
is our pegboard compartment. Our pegboard compartment is typically used to store tools and um, cleaners for your coach. If you were to remove the pegboard compartment, you would find the tanks behind the pegboard. Real quick, to cover uh, the, the dual uh, tire, uh, the air fill for the outside tire is here. The air fill for the inner tire is here. This door is for the DEF fill here. That's where you add your DEF fluid. And then the last door compartment is our chassis batteries and the chassis batteries disconnects. So to disconnect these batteries uh, to save energy and power, if you're gonna leave the coach parked uh, for several days, you want to shut these off or turn them to zero. Both of them need to be on zero to disconnect this from the coach so that the batteries don't drain down because after several days, they start to drain because there are certain power uh, uh, drains that happen from the ECM and other things uh, on the coach side. So um, after we're ready uh, to take a trip again, um, we want to get it out of the storage area. Then we flip these back on to the straight line that means on. And now we would be able to start our coach again. Just to uh, the right side here, you'll notice uh, cover over uh, this uh, additional fuse. There's a, a circular box here that has uh, smaller fuses. If we open this up, turn it counterclockwise, <clears throat> you'll notice here um, all of the other fuses that are supplied uh, by the chassis manufacturer um, they include things like passive steer, um, your trailer lights, um, and some extra fuses here, along with a tool that you can insert to the fuse to pull it out. So if you need to replace the fuse, just make sure to use the tool and replace it with the correct size. And you can put your tool back and cover back on and then just twist to the right to lock. There's a small fuse holder here and it's for your solar panel up on the roof. Um, just pull this off to check that fuse if you need to. Uh, this compartment is not sealed uh, because of the batteries. There is a small schematic on the back side of the batteries. If in case you take the batteries out and you don't remember the wiring, uh, positions, the schematic will help you put the wires back on the right place of the batteries. Um, just above this, these last two doors, uh, this is the door at the back of the coach. That's an emergency exit door. And that door is at the bathroom, at the back bathroom. And we'll look at that from the inside a little bit later on how to open that door in case you need to exit the coach uh, in an emergency. This is the outside entertainment center access door. Uh, it is locked, so just insert the key and turn it vertically, and that will unlock the door. And this television isn't mounted permanently. It actually can be pulled out a little bit, and then you can, you can tilt it uh, either, either direction uh, for viewing. Uh, to stow it back in place, just push. Uh, you'll notice here there's a Bose speaker mounted at the bottom. The Bose speak, uh, speaker can be controlled either through the TV, which that's the switch it's turned on to now, or it can be turned off. In addition, if you want the dash radio to come through this speaker instead of the TV, just turn it to dash radio and put your dash radio into house mode. Then everything that's coming out of the radio will come out on this Bose speaker. Above this control, I have an additional 120 volt outlet um, with the USB uh, charging ports. 
Once we're finished in this compartment, we just close it and lock. Uh, above this door, uh, the two windows for the kitchen. Uh, moving back here, uh, we have another marker light, amber marker light, and another 360, de uh, 360 degree view camera. Um, we have our window for the uh, above the kitchen um, cook area, and then uh, we have another security light here above that. So we're standing at the back of the coach, and if you look at the top there, just below the marker lights, you see a camera. That's the rear view camera. Um, down here below the third marker brake light is the 360 degree view camera. Uh, we'll demonstrate the lights in just a second, but to access the engine compartment, uh, the lever here, you'll have to pull down. Before you pull that down, you want to grab a hold here so it doesn't uh, come out too quickly at you, pull down, and then slowly lift. You'll feel pressure that's pushing up because of the air shocks. Starting over here uh, to the right side of the engine compartment, you'll see uh, a tank uh, that has the fluorescent green hydronic heating fluid. Um, that's for the Oasis ITR. Um, hot water and heat for your coach. Uh, this is the um, overflow tank and it will actually, as the hydronic heater is turned on and the, and the fluid heats up, it'll actually rise. And then as it's, as it's turned off, then that will, will go back down. You wanna keep it, uh, there's a cold level here, so you wanna keep it at least at this level uh, with, the, with everything turned off and the system cooled down. Um, just take the cap off the top here if you need to and add uh, right here. The fluid type that you would add is called Century Fluid. Um, this is the tank um, for the, it's called Final Charge. Uh, it is the antifreeze uh, for your engine. There's a little glass window here. You want to make sure that you see that red color in there. That means that it's, it's full. If you don't see the color in the glass, then you need to add to it, but don't take the cap off if the engine's warm. Wait till the engine completely cools down uh, to add any fluid here. Just to the left of that is our engine oil fill. If we check our dipstick uh, and we find that we have a low engine oil, we would want to take this cap off here and add the oil here. This is our hydraulic um, uh, tank. Uh, it says to what type of hydraulics to use. Um, this cap can be turned off and you can open this up and check the level here. So we can open that and it gives us full cold and add. Um, this is your backup beeper that comes on when you put the coach in reverse. This of course is your engine belt assembly. This is your synthetic transmission fluid you can pull this, uh, check it, and then add fluid if you need. This container has a filter in it. This is the filter for your intake uh, air for your engine combustion. Uh, this is mo this is uh, filter is monitored here by this little device. So when the engine is running. Uh, and the air is moving through here. There's a little vacuum and a yellow uh, indicator goes up and down. <clears throat> um, as long as the yellow indicator floats in the green area, the filter is clean. Once that yellow marker gets up into this red, you can see here it says change filter. So with the engine running, if that reaches the red, you'll need to change the filter 
in this canister uh, that's done with releasing here and then getting into that compartment to change it. The air that comes into this canister through the filter and then into the engine actually starts coming in up at the top in that, that screened area of the cap. So you wanna make sure if you do have an issue where this is showing that it needs to be changed, just make sure that that's open and there's nothing blocking the airflow coming in. At the very top of this engine compartment, uh, there is a small plug. Uh, this is for your block heater. Um, if you want your block heater to heat the engine, uh, let's say on a cold uh, morning so you don't have to start your engine cold, just plug this in and you'll have um, the heat to your block um, through 120 volt power here. If you don't want your engine block to be heated, then you just unplug it and stow this back in place. There is a manual light switch here for lighting this compartment, just on and off here. And when you're done with servicing or accessing this compartment, just grab a hold of the door and close it, and it will automatically latch here at the base. Below the engine compartment, you've got your uh, seven-way plug. If you have a uh, vehicle or trailer that has the air, the air hookup is here, and the adapter is in your kit in the coach. Okay, so we're gonna give you a demonstration of the lights, turn signals, and the backup lights. Those are the brake lights. That's our turn signal left. We'll do our turn signal right. Now he'll put it in reverse, and your rever reverse lights are here. So that's how you would check, make sure all of your lights are working. So this is your uh, radiator um, for cooling your engine and your transmission. You just wanna make sure that this stays open so air can move into those radiators. Just in front of the radiator compartment is your DEF fill. Just add your DEF there. When you retighten your cap, you know, you hear a click. You want to make sure that it's click. It at least clicks one time to be tight. Just above uh, the rear wheel here, that is your dryer vent. Just make sure that's clear and stays clear so the vent can uh, have exit air. You'll notice the jack. Um, the HWH jack is in the up position. Just want to make sure uh, if... Uh, you're gonna be traveling that those jacks are fully retracted. You can look at it visually right between the wheels. There's a access door here for the sewer line hoses uh, storage. You can put those back in here. You'll see a uh, exhaust here. Um, that's for our ITR Oasis. This compartment is the water compartment. The water compartment has all the controls for adding water or draining water from your coach. So we're going to start over here and this is the supply. This is called your city water you'll need to have this hose connected to a city water supply to add water to your coach. To extend it, just pull it out. If you pull out too much or want to retract it, then you would just use the power cord reel to retract. Once you're connected to a water source supply, you can now add water to your coach tank or just leave it in the autofill for city water to go in your coach. All of the water goes through a filter before it goes in your tank or in your water supply. 
the water goes through this filter and on a new coach, we supply the filter, but we don't install it. So you'll need to remove this canister Add the filter here and then install the canister. There is a tool that Numar supplies, a wrench that fits up over this that you can use uh, instead of doing it by hand. We've labeled all of the drains. Here is the gray water drain and release. Here's the drain outlet and release. Here's the sewage water holding tank and release here. So we've got gray, main drain, and sewage. Going back to the autofill, if you have it in this position and the water's connected, the water going through here will go into your coach. But if you want to fill your fresh water tank, you would put this handle in the up position and then instead of the water going into your coach, it's gonna fill your main water tank. The main water tank is the tank that you can see looking straight back. Once the tank is full, you can just turn it back to autofill and your city water uh, will go in your coach. If you are using the autofill and you're on city water, you will not need to turn your water pump on. But if you're using your fresh water tank, you'll need to turn your water pump on in order to have water pressure inside the coach. There's an RB SantaCon switch here, just below the water pump. This takes the effluent through this device, this is the SantaCon, and it pumps it out of this hose into the sewer. So if you are ready to empty the gray or the sewage tank, you'd want to open this valve here. Excuse me. You'd want to open the big valve here and insert this into the sewage tank. After you insert that, you would want to Actually, well, let's uh, back here. We can we can put this through here, and we can attach this to the sewer. Once our hose is connected to the sewer, we can choose whether we want to empty the gray or the sewer tank or both. Just simply by choosing the gray. We can open this and turn on the Santa Con and we're emptying the gray. If we open this one and then turn the Santa Con, we're emptying the black. I prefer to empty the black first and then follow with emptying the gray that will rinse out the sewage from that line. Do not turn the Santa Con switch on until you remove this cap and insert it in the sewage because uh, it will expand this hose too much and too much pressure will be on this hose. So just remember, take the cap off, insert it in the sewage, and then turn the SantaCon on. After you turn that on, open your valves, one or both, preferably the black first and then rinse with your gray. If you're not using the SantaCon to empty the sewage, if you're not using the SantaCon hose, you can use the main drain hose. You can attach a sewer hose here and use the SantaCon to empty through here with a larger hose if you like. If you're going to empty through here, attach your hose to the sewer then attach the hose here. You would open this valve up and then open the sewage and the gray here and here because this bypasses the SantaCon. 
when you're done draining your tanks, just put this cap back on and rotate it until it's tight and then store your hose away again. Just to the uh, bottom of the SantaCon is our sewage rinse. After we've emptied the sewage holding tank, we can then leave this valve open or the SantaCon on, and then we can turn the water source on to rinse the sewage tank. Uh, that effluent drains out. Once we turn the rinse off, and it's drained out, then we can close our valve handle here and turn our SantaCon off here. After you're done rinsing the sewage, if you open this valve to the open position, then it drains any additional water in the line out. And then you can close this. In addition to draining the line that goes through to the sewage rinse, you can open these two lines, which would be open for the hot and the cold water lines, and that will drain those low points here for the hot and the cold. So if I'm going to winterize my coach, I wanna make sure that my tank rinse and hot and cold water lines are all opened and all drained out before I winterize. Now that they're drained out, I can close them, right? And go through this winterizing process. So what is the winterizing process for your coach? So if you're gonna store your coach in uh, freezing temperatures, you wanna use these steps and this hose into an, an antifreeze uh, for the inside uh, water lines and appliances. Um, following those steps, you drain the fresh water tank, which is, there's a low point drain in the back. That handle, you can reach back here and you can feel it. Can't really see it too well, but you want to open that and make sure that all the water is drained out of your fresh tank. We just showed you the low points here for the other drains. You drain these out, drain that out, and appliances. You remove the cartridge in the whole house filter, which is this cartridge. Close the low point valves, which we did. You insert this hose into potable antifreeze, turn the water pump on. And what happens when you turn the water pump on, it pulls the potable antifreeze up in and through the water pump and the water pump pumps the antifreeze into all of your water lines, hot and cold, into the shower and any appliances so that antifreeze is in those lines instead of water. Um, another item at the bottom here is you wanna flush the toilet and open all the drains. Keep in mind that if you are going to operate the shower and uh, have all the flow going out, uh, the jets in the shower, whether it's the handheld one or the overhead, you wanna make sure that the aquamizer is not turned to recycle. Uh, turn the recycle mode off, that way the antifreeze solution will go through uh, those jets and, and not back into the uh, fresh water tank. When you're done winterizing, you would put the cap back on here and instead of closed valve A, you'd open A and close B. So close B and, and open A. In addition to the water pump, uh, pumping water or antifreeze, there is a screen that is a manual cleaning screen. If the water pump for any reason might get debris in the line that comes in from the water, you can check that and remove the screen and or debris and then put the screen back and then twist the screen back in place.
You'll notice that we label our water lines red and blue. The red is hot, the blue is cold. Just to the left of the water pump is a temperature control so that when this compartment reaches a cooler temperature of around 40 degrees, that sensor closes and it turns on the hydronic heater. But you wanna make sure that your ITR Oasis burner is on, and we'll show you that in a minute, uh, so that you have heat in this compartment because when the fans kick on, you want that heat uh, to go down in this compartment and keep this warm during cold weather conditions. There is uh, a shower rinse here that you can rinse off uh, this area um, and clean your hands. Um, this is just basically hot and cold here and on and off. When you're finished, you just stow this away. Uh, the LED light strip will go out when the door is closed. So this is the cord reel compartment door. In the cord reel compartment, um, we have our transfer switch, which transfers the power from either the shore cord or the gray one to generator, which supplies power in your coach. That, that power is monitored on this uh, LED display and you can scroll up and down through this screen and see what power you have on each leg. Just below that, we have the cable connections. Uh, the cable will always be provided with the coach. Uh, the satellite tripod and one and two are optional, so you may or may not have that depending on the options you got with your, with your coach. On the back wall, is a panel that's removable. It's Velcroed in place. So once you get the panel removed, you can see what Numar has labeled each of the circuits on the fuses. So each fuse has a number. F1 uh, will match F1 here. And you'll notice that the F1 or the Fs are fuses, the Bs are breakers. So if you blow an F, series number, it gives the amperage of the fuse. If you need a fuse, Numar provides additional or extra fuses in the front compartment, so you can change that fuse. If a breaker trips, it should reset by itself. There are a few of the fuses labeled F1 through F5, that are actually resettable. Even though there are a fuse, you can press the yellow button here to reset it. So you don't need to change those. If you look just to the right side of the fuse, you'll see your battery disconnect, which disconnects the house batteries through the switch as you come into the coach. Uh, that's called battery disconnect. And just beside that is your uh, battery isolation management system. It connects the house batteries to the chassis batteries uh, if you need a boost to start your engine or when you have charging uh, that's ample on either side, it will connect and charge the other set of batteries if they're low. Just to the right of that are two, ex, uh, two additional control modules. Uh, one is for the touch screen, the 10 inch touch screen inside and uh, for the ITR Oasis here. So in this compartment is your ITR Oasis Chinook, which is your hydronic heating system. This heats your hot water and gives you heat uh, for forced air in the entire coach. This is a diesel burner system and the diesel tank that you fill up to drive your coach has to be at least above a fourth of a tank in order for this to operate. So um, that's just a protection for you so that uh, if you leave this running, it doesn't drain your tank dry it stops at a quarter tank, um, and then you would have to fill more into the tank to get it to operate again. 
So starting at the top here, looking down at the LED lights, when you turn it on, you'll notice the green LED light comes on and shows that it has power. And you hear the ventilation fan on. Um, it comes on simultaneously when you turn the power on. When you turn on the AC heating elements in the overhead inside, uh, this LED light will come on as long as you're plugged into power or have your generator on. When any of these other components uh, start inside, the compressor, fuel pump, or combustion fan, uh, those LED lights will light up a solid green. The igniter, flame out voltage, and low water sensors, if any of those fail, you'll see a red LED light on those indicators. If you see a red LED light, that means that component has an issue and would need to have service. There is another control box, it's silver, right here. And if any of the lights on this indicator show red, those are also faults. And whichever light comes on, you can read beside the light which component failure that is, and those would also need to be checked. They should all remain green when they're operating correctly. When the, diesel burner when the diesel burner comes on and is burning, there's a, a small glass window here that you can view the flame. Uh, the flame is a bright orange. So when the flame is on and burning, you can see that burn in the background. When the AC uh, heating elements are on, you'll see the AC uh, heat uh, LED lit up here. These should all be solid green when they're operating correctly on the top five. If any of these are blinking green, then those would have a fault. So the bottom four blink red if there's a fault, and the top five blink green if there's a fault. If there's solid green, that means everything's operating correctly. Looking at the lines that go in and out of the hydronic system, you've got your cold water inlet, your hot water out, and these are your heating loops that go all the way through the coach and heat up the convectors uh, for forced air uh, heating, uh, not only in the coach living area, but also in the water compartment to keep the water compartment warm in cold temperatures so you don't have freezing. There is a shutoff valve here on the hot water line that comes from the ITR Oasis that goes up to the front spigot that you can connect for hot water uh, for washing. If you're going to operate the Oasis in cold water temperatures, you don't want that hot water to go up to the front. You want to turn this off. That's in the off position here. When you're operating the ITR Oasis uh, in temperatures that are above freezing, you can open this up and you'll have hot water to the hot water spigot up front. Cross or vertical position is off. This is the uh, storage uh, compartment in front of the ITR Oasis. In this compartment is the, uh, the tray. Um, you can move the tray in either direction on this side of the coach or the other. And the magnum inverter, again, is located between the frame rails um, in this compartment area. In the compartment just behind the front wheel is your battery, your house battery tray. Your house battery tray can be removed or accessed by removing the locking pins and then you can pull the whole tray out to service the batteries. These are AGM batteries. Um, the AGM batteries are pretty much maintenance free. You don't need to add water or any fluid to these batteries. The schematics for this wiring are located here on the right hand side on this label. And all of the power that comes out of this assembly of batteries goes through these two fuses. So 
These fuses can be replaced. If you're not getting power out of your battery bank, you wanna check and make sure you have power on both sides of the fuse. When you're done servicing or checking the batteries, you can push the tray back in place and put your lock pins back in. Since these batteries are pretty much maintenance free, you just wanna make sure that the connections and terminals are clean um, because they are pretty much a maintenance free battery. The fuel door is the same as the opposite side, just rotate counterclockwise to open and clockwise to close after you fuel. These two lights are marker light and docking light and the rocker switches on the inside at the driver position. The front compartment door has your cockpit uh, control fuses and your chassis fuses and relays. All of the fuses and relays are labeled. On the green board up here, they're labeled on the board itself, entry step, jack buzzer, and whenever you have a fuse that's either blown or not working, the little LED light at that fuse will be lit or will come on. If that happens and you need to change a fuse, you would just take the fuse out. If that fuse is blown and match it up to the fuse, the spare fuses that Numar provides, choose one that's the same rating, which this one's a 20, and then just replace the fuse. Once you do that, that LED light should go out because you have a good fuse replacing it. To access the chassis fuses and relays, you have to take these screws loose. And on the back side of this ABS cover are all the labels for each fuse location on the chassis side. If you turn this around, you can see, for instance, passenger driver seat. Uh, those are the fuses that uh, will give you the, the seating. Uh, the heat seat is F23 and four. Uh, operating seat are these fuse locations. The relays are labeled R, L, Y, where the fuses are labeled F. You also have ignition relays over here. Each one is labeled in each position. Some of these smaller fuses are resettable. Obviously the fuses up here are ones that you would have to replace. We have spare fuses here. If any of the smaller size ones uh, need to be replaced, we have spares over here. When you're done checking the fuses or if you need to replace one, just put this panel back in place and tighten the screws. The connections up front are for the battery ground and hot. And the LED strip light is here, which when the door closes, that goes out. This box is labeled living room and that's for the floor heat supply for 120 volt in the living room. We looked at this earlier, but this again is the hood latch release for the front compartment. We pull on that, that'll release the front hood. So starting at the driver's side cockpit area, on the left side, starting at the back control, you'll see it's labeled HWH, computerized leveling. So this system, when it's powered up, will deploy the jacks for leveling. It will do auto level, or you can independently control the jacks uh, by depressing these arrows. So before you deploy the jacks, you want to make sure that the coach is aired up and that the slide rooms are extended. Once the coach is aired up and the slide rooms are already extended, then you would want to deploy the jacks. 
So in order to deploy the jacks, um, we would turn the ignition on so that the pump has power. So we turn the key ignition on. And you can see our, our board uh, lights came on. Uh, we're in the travel mode now because the jacks are retracted. At the top left corner is the auto level button. So we want the coach to automatically level. We just press that button. You can hear the coach leveling. Can hear the jacks going down. And that's the jack buzzer warning that you're hearing. Each red light that you see is the jack in the down position. So these three jacks in the front right, right rear, and re left rear are all deployed. And our fourth jack is going down now. And our auto level light has stopped blinking, so we know we're in the level position. Now we can turn the ignition off and the jack buzzer warning should go out. So why do we have the jack buzzer warning? Uh, that is so that you don't turn the key on and uh, start the engine and then put the coach in drive or reverse. You wanna make sure the jacks are retracted uh, before you put the coach in gear. So, now that we have deployed the jacks, um, let's say we're ready to travel and we want to retract the jacks. Um, all we have to do is turn the ignition key back on and press the button that says auto store here and the jacks will automatically store. Let's do that really quick so you can see it. We hit auto store. As each jack retracts, the red light will go out. And when the final jack is retracted, the buzzer warning will stop. So we only have one jack left to retract. Once that's retracted, we can start the engine, let the coach air up. Once the coach is aired up, we can run the slide rooms in. As the coach airs up, you'll be able to watch the air pressure gauges here and here. Once they stop, at about 140 PSI, uh, then we can run the rooms in and we're ready for travel. While it's airing up, we'll take a quick look at the shift pad. The shift pad um, is an Allison transmission shift pad. Uh, the N indicates neutral. 
R indicates reverse, and the D indicates drive. <clears throat> Once the transmission is warmed up, you can go into the mode, and you can scroll up and down and get additional information about your transmission. Refer to your owner's manual um, for those additional functions, and you'll be able to view um, more details about your selection on your economy and transmission. Just in front of the transmission selection, we have our left and right mirrors. So our driver mirror is on the left. To make adjustments, we just turn it to left or right, and then we move the arrow, press the arrow, and it moves the mirror to that direction. When we're done adjusting the mirrors, we put it in the center or neutral position. If there is uh, moisture, frost, or ice on the mirror, we can turn on the heat, and the uh, heat will go into the mirror from a heating pad in the back side. Uh, once they're defrosted, you can turn that off. Just above, uh, just in front of the mirror selection, you have the ATC override switch. Um, you also have the window up and down. Just in front of those rocker switches, you have the tag axle, auto, disable, and manual. So if I want to dump the tag axle, to release the pressure off of the tag axle to make it easier to make a sharp turn while I'm backing up, I can just dump that by pressing this button forward. It automatically dumps when I put it in reverse. Just beside that rocker switch is the engine brake. The engine brake uses the exhaust while you're driving. If you turn the engine brake on, that would be forward. Once you engage the engine brake, you can choose the level of braking amount here on this rocker switch beside it. I can go low brake, medium brake, or high. What that does is when you let off the accelerator, uh, you let off the accelerator pedal, um, you'll get low braking, medium braking, or a lot more braking uh, by engaging it into the high. If I don't want any engine brake at all, then I just leave it off. This is especially helpful uh, when you're going down hills. The instrument uh, cluster on the front here, um, you have the choice for bright and dim, house battery boost, auto high beams here, and dome light here. So once I turn my lights on here, you'll be able to dim the switches here. You can see them go dim. Uh, if that's too dim, you can make them a little bit brighter this way. If my coach, for some reason, has a low chassis battery and I want to use the house battery boost to generate more power to the chassis battery so I can start the coach, just press battery boost and hold that down for 60 seconds that will connect the house batteries to the chassis and that will help me start the coach in case I have dead chassis batteries. The high beams automatically dim if you turn on the um, auto high beams uh, they will automatically dim. If this is not turned on or you put it in cancel you'll have to dim the high beams with your turn signal switch you'll notice here um, that if, if the high beams are on and my ignition is engaged, when I, when I pull the switch back, if my lights are on, you'll see here it goes from, um, it should go from bright uh, to regular lights. If I have my fog lights on, it's going to show that it went to fog lights instead of bright. Turn the lights off here. 
This is your parking brake. These are, this is an air brake. Whenever you come to a stop and you're gonna park, you wanna pull this parking brake. Um, you can either pull the parking brake right away and then put the coach in neutral. I prefer putting the coach in neutral first and then pulling the parking brake, just so I don't forget to take it out of gear. But this should always be pulled towards you when you're in the park position. When you're ready to travel, you would push this forward, would release the parking brake, and then you put it in the gear that whether you're going forward or reverse. The instrument cluster here has an access panel above so that you can get behind to the wiring behind this panel, this uh, simple bear, Velcro here. Um, looking at the panel from left to right, you have fuel, your fuel gauges, temperature, engine temperature, and oil pressure for your engine. You have both of your air ride suspension here and your DEF. You have your tachometer here. You have your trip settings uh, at your home screen here. You can scroll up and down to these settings right here on your wheel. Just to the right of that, you have your engine RPM. So if we look at the steering wheel and we look at that same screen that's lit up here and we go to the home page, we can scroll arrow up or down to control the brightness, messages, trip settings, info, tire pressure monitoring, or ACC, adaptive cruise. Looking at the TPMS, which is a tire pressure monitor system, you'll notice that all of the tires are in the green. If you see one that's turned red, you should check that tire pressure before you travel. Once you select one of those settings, you can press OK. Once I do that, I can change or view the other screen in those settings. If I'm in info and hit OK, you can see how that scrolls up and down engine load percentage, acceleration position, scan. Go back to the home, I can see trip, press OK, changes from A to B, and I can do that with all of those other selections. The other instrument cluster in the center of the steering wheel is for the radio here and the source. So once you choose the radio and you want the volume up or down, that's controlled here. Uh, you can scroll forward or reverse when you're playing music or uh, to scroll to another channel, change channels. If you want to mute the volume completely, uh, coming from the radio, just press the mute button. There is an additional light, headlight and marker lights. Um, when you press that down and hold it, those lights or the marker lights will come on as long as you hold that button down. For whether it's the marker light or the headlights, um, those will come on when you press depress that button. The third... The third instrument cluster on the left is for your telephone. If you want to make a hands-free call, you can press that green button down for hands-free. And when you're finished with the call, you can press the red button to hang up. The other button is wiper wash and wiper high low. The intermittent function for the wipers is engaged when you press the button. You can hear the wipers go and the amount of time that passes before you depress it again is the length of the delay that will take place. Once you uh, turn the wipers on or the delay on, you can simply turn them off and then your wipers are shut off. There's a foot pedal on the lower left of the column that you can adjust the wheel, telescope, or tilt. So 
if I depress that foot pedal, I can tilt the wheel forward or I can pull it towards me to telescope or push it back down to make my adjustments. Once I adjust the wheel where I want, I can adjust the pedals with this button. Push down and they go in, pull back and they come out towards me. This is the amount of steering assist for the electric steering wheel. You can increase the setting to make it easier or decrease it to make it more firm steering. It's called comfort drive. Moving over to the center dash display, we have your radio and cameras. Um, we can set up our Apple CarPlay here. Um, you can set it up through your phone. Uh, the other menu functions, as soon as you plug this in um, over here to the left of your seat, then your phone is connected to the radio. It's also charging. There's an additional USB and 12 volt type charging here, but you want to use the top one to connect your paired device to your radio. So as you scroll through the menu here, we've got uh, the radio function. You've got Media Center, uh, Sirius XM, if you have that available. Uh, your Bluetooth is going to be, uh, if you wanted to Bluetooth um, through your phone, you can do that. Uh, you have HDMI, auxiliary. Your camera control uh, gives you the 360 degree view. So if you're in the 360 degree view, press that and then you can come over here uh, to your toggle switch and you can toggle to those views here. Apple CarPlay, we just talked about that. I've got my phone connected to it. There is nav. Um, of course, navigation, uh, you have to accept the terms and then you're ready to uh, put in a location that you want to navigate to. Uh, there's the mobile eye. The mobile eye, we just looked at it earlier from the front of the coach. Um, this is a lane mitigation device that's in the front of the coach. If we lift up the shade, you can see the mobile eye right there. So that helps you navigate uh, and gives you lane change warnings uh, through the, uh, the eye that's mounted there on the front. Um, there is a setup um, for the um, radio. Um, you can go into your setup uh, system. Keep in mind that when you're doing these, um, scrolling through the other settings, there may be two pages. So if you want to view the second page, you have to press in the upper right corner to see that uh, second page view. If you want to jump directly to navigation, you can just press the nav button instead of going from the menu into nav you can go straight to navigation here uh, you can dim the screen adjust and go to your favorites here if you're set up for sirius xm if you just want to power this screen down just press and hold the button for a second and you get the new mars flash screen it's turned off the same with the camera screen if you want to turn that off just press the power button and that screen will turn off there is an additional charging here on the front. If we want to just use the hands-free without the cord plugged in, you can set your phone in here and your phone will charge there. Uh, moving down below the radio and the camera screens, uh, we have our HVAC system for the cockpit area. When we turn the fan on here, you'll notice um, you have to have the engine on for this function to work. You have two buttons beside the fan speed settings. One is for the air conditioner, that's the snowflake. And if you want to just circulate the air that's in the cockpit area, you want to make sure and depress that and the amber light will come on. Adjusting the temperature setting is here to the left or down to the bottom of the blue is all the way cool. To the right is the warmest setting. And then you can choose which one of the locations you want the uh, air to be uh, routed to. Uh, this is the lower level or feet. 
then you got your dash feet and or just dash only or mid only is here. You'll notice that sometimes if you are not selecting mid, but you, you select one of the others, the far mid one stays on all the time and that's to give defrost to that door window. If the light is out, that means the air conditioner is off and the circulation is off. You can still operate uh, the cool and the heat. Uh, you'll have some outside air coming in if you go to cool and or heat. You just won't have the air conditioning to use until you press and the button comes on and turns blue. Just below the HVAC selection, you've got your visor and shade. So if we press the visor, you can see our visor is coming down. The front has its own visor. You'll notice that the visor is only coming down halfway and the shade is only coming down halfway. That's a built-in safety feature for when we have the key ignition turned on so that if the key was on and you were driving, you wouldn't be blinded by the shade or the visor. Once I turn the key off though, I can move the shade and the visor down all the way to the closed position. This visor is on the left. The other controls here going across are the docking lights, the overhead fans. The overhead fans will come on if the ignition is on. You can hear the overhead fans come on and you can adjust the speed of those overhead fans right here, high, medium or low. Um, we can turn the overhead fans off completely just by turning them, the rocker switch off here. There's an additional high, medium and low fan speed, or excuse me, there's an additional high and low fan speed for this convector down below. Um, but in order for that to operate, the ITR Oasis has to be on and the hydronic fluid has to be warmed up. Once that happens, you can get heat coming out of the center convector just by pressing it to low or high in the middle is off. To start the generator, we can do that from inside the coach right here. We can hit gen start. And our generator starts up. When we're done with the generator, we just hit the stop button and it will stop. The entrance door lock is here. We can lock the door. So this rocker switch is to operate the air horn. If I have it off, it will operate the street horn. That's the air. That's the street. There's courtesy lights that we can turn on. The courtesy lights are the lights near the floor area. This is the visor for over on the passenger side. And we covered this 360 degree camera select switch um, earlier. The key fob will control the door entrance lock and unlock, also the cargo locks. There is a additional drawer space here in the center console. In the dash area at the front here, there's an access panel on the top of the dash that is Velcroed in that can be removed, the access behind the dash. There's another access panel here in the front that's also Velcroed, you can remove that. Uh, you can adjust the louvers, this one always stays on. Uh, these uh, can be closed just by turning them uh, so they're in the closed position. If you close too many of these vents, 
uh, you may hear a little bit of a whistling sound because there's more air rushing out of the other ones that are still open. At the passenger seat, uh, the controls that you see here on the rocker switches, uh, we will operate the uh, ceiling lights on and off. You have the step cover. To operate the step cover, just press and hold. The step cover comes out and up. Uh, we have the visor, which operates the visor at this position. To operate the MCD shade, uh, you need the MCD remote. We also have the map light here and the phone charger. Just place your phone here for charging. There's an extra USB here to plug in and charge. On the wall, there's an outlet with two extra USBs um, and 120 volts. Just above that, you have the floor heat for zone one, which is in the living room and kitchen area. If you want the floor heat to be on, you have to press floor heat, and then you choose which high, medium, or low you want. Um, you've got all the ceiling light controls here. Uh, once I'm done in this area and I want the step cover to retract, I just push the step cover in the opposite direction and it retracts and stores. At the front of the passenger controls, um, we have the patio lights that also illuminate in the step well. We have the lock and unlock for the baggage doors and the main battery disconnect. When the battery disconnect is on, the, this uh, LED is illuminated red. If we turn the battery disconnect off, we're cutting the battery power from the coach and everything will shut down. So just a quick uh, view of that. If I turn the battery disconnect off, oh, is down. Everything will turn off. Turn it back on, then our systems will uh, come back on. We can turn our lights back on. Just below the controls here, uh, we have our fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher release is right here, uh, a black strap handle. Just pull that down and we can remove the fire extinguisher if we need to use it. Uh, the passenger seat has a folding table. Um, if you want to use the table, um, you can use it anytime, whether you're um, moving down the road or just stable. Um, has a cut little cup holder. And the table folds back out and in away. So that's available if you like to use it. There are armrests here on both sides. If you adjust the armrest down, there's a, a little release here at the front to make the adjustment. Once you have the adjustment where you want it, <clears throat> it locks into place do that on both sides. Once it locks into place, um, I can put them back in out of the way. There's additional controls for the seat here, um, forward and back. Definitely want to make sure that the seat is forward uh, when we're running the slide room in and out. These controls adjust the tilt of the seat forward and back. This control is for our footrest. Up and down. And on the side of the seat, on the right hand side, where the camera is not in, there's a, uh, there's a couple other controls. Um, we have the uh, one or two for the heat of the seat. So if you go just one, you'll have a little bit of heat. Two will have more heat for the seat. Um, in addition to that, we have a, another um, control here for the lumbar. And then our last one is to rotate the seat into the living room area. So if we're gonna rotate the seat into the living room area, we wanna make sure that we have clearance on the side. And then once we pull the release up, we can rotate the seat around into the living room area.
Once you're done um, with the seat in this position, you can rotate it back either sitting down or you can actually get up and just rotate the seat around like this manually. It will lock into place uh, where it started. So the driver's seat and the adjustments are about the same as the passenger seat. The armrests are the same. Um, these are set here. Uh, the small lever here in the front, you can pull up and now I can adjust that where I want and then release and that locks into place. Or I can just flip them up out of the way. There's the forward and reverse or tilt the seat. This is the seat back, forward and back. And then there's the footrest here. The footrest will only work if the parking brake is engaged. If I uh, go into drive and release the parking brake, then I won't be able to operate the footrest. Um, on the opposite side, left-hand side, uh, there's the same additional controls that you have on the passenger seat uh, for seat heat and lumbar. And there's a lever that you have to pull up if you want to rotate the seat into the living room area. You would pull up on that, make sure that you have clearance on the seat back, tilt forward if you need a little more room. Then once you pull up, you can rotate your seat around. Make sure that you're clear of the steering wheel. All right, now we can run our Put rest out, up and down. When we're done with our seat in the living room position area, we can either get out of the seat or just rotate it back around this way and it will lock back in place. Now we're locked into place, uh, ready to drive. So at the cockpit area, just above the driver's seat, we have the overhead and the controls in this compartment will go over um, what they do and how to operate them. Uh, starting at the top left, you have your Wi-Fi router, which is called Wi-Fi Ranger. Uh, the password um, is located on uh, the sticker here for your coach. So you can log into this and go to your setup screen to set that up. Um, just to the left of that, we have our satellite um, power up search and stow uh, that needs to be plugged in here uh, to operate the satellite up and down just uh, to the left side here we have our power management which is our power control system central panel uh, when we turn that on we can see what the coach is plugged into and how much power is available in addition to that, this control will shed loads if we don't have enough power coming in. So we can scroll through and we can see uh, what's going on, our battery charger, normal inverter off and such. We can see if any of the load statuses are shed um, for the block heater, water heater, everything's on. So. Nothing is currently shed, and that's because we're plugged into 50 amps, so nothing really needs to be shed. If we were plugged into uh, a cheater cord or a smaller amperage supply, um, then obviously um, you would want to set this to uh, that power supply so that it would shed loads um, that were too great to handle either in 30 or 20 amp service. To get more details on that, just refer to your owner's manual under Precision Circuits. The control uh, next to that is the Weingard television over the air receiver. Uh, this tunes in channels and automatically scans, which it's doing right now. So it's scanning for over the air TV channels. Once it scans, it gives you the number of channels it has received. You can put it in additional search or you can rotate it left and right. Uh, it actually rotates inside of a dome so you can't see it rotate, but it is rotating. If you're watching TV over the air, you cannot watch the cable 
uh, the cable hookup that's in the cord reel, even if that's plugged in, you won't be able to view the cable until you turn this off. Then you could watch the cable. So in other words, if this is connected, it disconnects the cable and vice versa. The control next to it is the WineGuard awning. Uh, this mirrors the handheld device that we showed you how to operate. Lights, lock, unlock, in, out, and uh, the channel selection one, two, or zero for both awnings at the same time. So you can control those right here inside. The slide room, slide outs uh, in the front of the coach here can be controlled here for in and out. Uh, the one on the right controls the slide on your right. The one on the left controls the one on the driver's side. They're labeled off door side slide out, which is left and the door side slide out, which is on the door side, is the right. You have to press and hold them in to come in. You have to press and hold them out to go out. It will not travel. If you remove your finger, it will stop travel. So you'll have to re depress it again to continue the travel. You hold that button down, whether you're going in the in or out direction, until the slide room is all the way in or all the way out and it will stop automatically then you release this is your entrance door awning extend and retract entrance door awning light on and off living room awning extend and retract and your living room window awning extend and retract so this is additional awning controls for the smaller awnings and these are for your main awnings. The light that's in the top here will go out once uh, the door is closed with the magnetic switch. Uh, moving over here to the television, uh, the television here in the front will only display and stay turned on when the ignition is off. If you turn the key on to start the engine, this television will um, go off or out. There's additional storage space in this overhead here. So moving into the living room area, uh, the cabinets in this overhead are for storage, uh, but there's an audio visual cabinet here with the Bose speaker. The AV cabinet, as we call it, is the audio visual cabinet. And this coach is pre-wired for satellite. Uh, the connections are here, and this is for your cable connection. To switch from uh, satellite one and the ground mount satellite, there is an A, B switch. You'll have to uh, select which one you want to watch. And that's the only one that you'll be able to view once you make that selection. To operate the Bose speaker, there is a separate control. Uh, so if you're watching the television, and your Bose speaker is um, uh, being used through the TV, you'll have to adjust the volume controls here. Um, you also have the selection for Bluetooth. If you want to Bluetooth that speaker, you can to another device. In addition to controlling uh, the Bose speaker with this small um, remote, you can use the sofa baton that's pre-programmed in your coach. There's additional cabinet space here. Um, the television is located behind the sofa and you have to actuate the TV lift up to view the TV. So we'll do that now. Just press the TV lift button one time and it raises up. You can power it on with the Samsung remote. Once the TV's up, um, you'll need to choose whether you want to watch over the air TV or uh, cable. Um, you have to make that selection uh, and choose a source 
once you uh, get to this screen, if you want to watch over the air TV, <clears throat> you have to go into the um, over the air uh, icon, which is through the gear. You have to choose the gear and then you have to scan for channels. All right, so you'll have to choose uh, the broadcasting icon to scan for channels if you want to watch over the air TV. So I go here, choose broadcasting, and I want to auto program. And I want to start, press start to search for channels. Yes. Now, to scan for channels, I want to make sure that I turn my WineGuard antenna receiver on. The LED will display green. And I want to scan for air. You can't do both. You have to either select air or cable. In this case, we're going to select air. And then we'll go through a scan procedure. And the channels will automatically store in the TV. You'll need to do this scan procedure uh, when you travel to a new area because the channels will be different. Uh, we found 40 channels, um, so we can close this menu. And we're ready to watch over the air TV. If we want to scan for cable, we can do that in the same way. You scroll down to your gear icon again. And you'll need to do this if you want to go back to broadcasting again, auto program, make sure your cable's plugged in outside, make sure your over the air antenna is turned off. In the front overhead camera, make sure the uh, wine guard receiver for over the air is turned off and then choose cable and then scan for cable channels. We don't have the cable plugged in. If we did, we'd be getting uh, uh, cable channels that showed up here um, that would store um, for the cable that we're plugged into. We'll just hit stop here since we're not plugged in. It won't show any channels uh, that we've got. So we'll close this screen out and go back to our TV broadcast. To retract uh, the televator, uh, we just press the televator button one time, and it will retract. Uh, to open the bed uh, that's underneath the sofa uh, to be a sleeper sofa, we just take the pillows off. And the two cushions. And there's a lift handle in the back here. We can lift that up to release it. And then just lift the front out, extend down, and put the back in place. And now we have our sleeper bed all set up. To retract everything back in the original position, just do everything in reverse. And put our cushions back on. There's an additional set of controls on the side here for the fan um, and the kitchen water and backlighting and the water pump. So for the theater seating, uh, the controls for opening the footrest and tilting the chair back are right here on the front. So when you sit down and you press the forward button, the footrest the foot comes out and it tilts back. Uh, to retract the seat, just push the button towards you to retract. There's additional storage space here. There's even a USB plug here if you want to plug your device in for charging. 
this is the TV lift control up and down. Um, the seat aft lighting and forward seat lighting are here. There's the same type of control uh, on the other side of the seat, and it controls the same way. In the overhead, we have additional storage space here. And to operate the shades, these are MCD shades. Um, they have their own remote. Okay, so there's two MCD controls, remote controls, one for the back of the coach and one for the front. That's all up, and that's all down. So obviously this is the one for the front. Uh, this is the one for the bedroom. That's how you control the shades here. You can control the shades individually or all together. There is one sensor here in the front uh, that is the uh, sensor for the air conditioning and heating uh, that's here. Uh, moving back into the dinette area, we have additional lighting wall controls here for the ceiling lights. Uh, additional 120 volt outlet with charging ports. Um, there are additional storage drawers here. There's three. Um, if we move this, we can see we have additional storage space down below. On both sides, it's identical. If we want to extend the table for additional seating, just pull out. There's additional chairs under the bed. We'll get one to show you. So once the table is extended, we could use the additional seating that's provided by Numar here at the front or the sides. There's another chair that we could add. In the overhead, we have more storage space here. Another wall outlet with charging ports for USB. More drawer space and cabinet space here. This shelf would be uh, designed for a, a printer or computer access uh, through this um, pre-drilled access port uh, to come plug in here. In the kitchen, we have our Whirlpool refrigerator, stainless steel. And you notice here I'm trying to open the doors and they're locked. Numar puts a locking mechanism on the doors so that when you're traveling, the doors won't open up on you in transit. So to unlock, you move it to the right. Now we can open the doors. As you look inside the refrigerator, you'll notice a filter here and another air filter there. The air filter in the, that's provided in the refrigerator uh, would go in the fresh flow compartment area in the back. The water filter would go here. Uh, so when you're ready to use the refrigerator, you would plug those filters in. After you close the door, uh, the freezer door will still open independently. This is the ice cube tray for the ice maker here. The ice maker will make ice only if the bail arm is down. So you have to make sure the bail arm is down to make ice. If we put it in the up position, uh, it won't make any ice at all. To turn the refrigerator on, which is in the off position now, just press and hold these buttons down and the refrigerator will come on. To turn the temperature colder or warmer, um, we just go uh, freezer temp here and refrigerator temp here. That would be colder and that would be warmer. So pressing it one more time, that's gonna be a little warmer setting. Once we change the filter, water filter or air filter, we press and hold those for three seconds and it resets those filters so that it gives you a warning when they need to be changed again. To operate the dispenser, uh, just place our cup here and press in, and that will give you cold water dispense. When you're ready to travel again, um, you just 
lock the door by moving the latch to the left and now our doors are locked. To the side of the refrigerator is the pantry. Um, these drawers are locked. They won't open when you pull on them, but they're press to release. Now they'll open. And they're all that way. They're all locked, but if you press, it releases it so you can open it and store or take out whatever you need. Uh, once you're done in this area, this latch mechanism, top and bottom, will latch the door closed. In the kitchen area, we have the cook top, we have the sink and the microwave, along with the dishwasher. Starting at the cabinet here on the side of the microwave, we have storage. Above the microwave, more storage. The microwave uh, needs to be plugged in when you get your coach. That plug is located up in the back of this cabinet. So you'll need to plug the microwave in to have power to the microwave. You will find in every Newmar coach all of the literature, warranty information, and registration paperwork, along with your owner's operator's manual in this black case. So I would suggest that you take out your owner's manual and go through it. It'll take a little time, but you'll be glad you did because everything we're covering is in this manual. All of the registration information on heating, air conditioning, um, electrical and appliances is all in here along with that paperwork that came directly from the OEM. So please review that and send in your warranty registration cards um, after you take ownership of your coach. Additional information is displayed on the inside of the cabinets here, the weights, the serial numbers, even the paint codes are all here, along with the additional warnings about operating uh, and gross vehicle weight. This drawer pulls in and out. Uh, the sink has removable covers. These covers can be stored underneath in the cabinet area here. You have the trash receptacle and additional drawer space here. The sink has a telescoping spray that's controlled manually here. You want to spray and retract. This is hot and cold on and off. To the left of the sink is your cook your cooktop, your range. On the opposite side of each of those covers is a cutting board, so you can use that cutting board if you like. Um, there's a cutting board on each cover. This is a true induction cooktop that is removable, so you can actually lift it out of this opening, unplug it, and take it outside if you'd like. The only type of pans that will work uh, with this true induction, uh, once you power it up, are a uh, cooking pan that is magnetic. So it has to have, um, you can test your pan and make sure that it has a magnetism by using a magnet at the bottom of your pan, then you know it would work um, with this true induction cooktop. When you're finished using the cooktop, just put your covers back in place to protect the glass surface. Additional drawer space, silverware or cooking utensils. And um, this is the Fisher Paykel uh, dishwasher. The dishwasher is locked right now. Um, you'd have to power it up so that you can unlock it. After you're done using it and you're ready to travel, you can just press the lock button and then it's locked so it won't open in transit. 
To the left of the dishwasher, we have additional uh, space that you can extend out by pressing the black button here. So you have more countertop space. These drawers still open and close. When you're done using the additional space, just push in and it releases automatically. Just below the drawers, we have the louvers. The louvers on both sides allow air movement in and out because the heating convectors are located uh, in behind the cabinets. So above the sink is the ventilation fan for the kitchen area. There's an identical fan in the bathroom. Uh, this is a fantastic vent, and to operate it, um, you can go to your screen here um, and turn it on and off. Oh, I guess, yeah. Um, the fan can be operated here. If we turn our fan on here, uh, the fan lid opens, and we can adjust the fan speed to high, medium, or low. To turn the fan off, just press this button again, and the fan goes off. If for any reason that rain sensor is keeping uh, the lid from opening and the fan from coming on, you can press this for three seconds and you'll override the rain sensor. And then that LED light will come on. If for any reason the switch panel is not controlling the fan, you can actually remove these louvers and you can open the fan manually with this control. So you will still get some ventilation here uh, just by opening it manually. When you're finished, you can close it. And you're ready to travel. If you do remove this uh, cover, just make sure you line these uh, clips back up and put it back in place and then press up. Near the floor, we have our vacuum system. Uh, the vacuum system can either be hooked to a hose here at this uh, position or simply by lifting this up, um, you can have uh, whatever you've swept and you can sweep it up into this position, it'll go in the back. So to how do you turn the vacuum on? The way to turn the vacuum on is right here. You connect your hose. What you want to make sure to do is um, make sure that you have your filter bag in the vacuum before you operate it. Uh, if, you have, if you need additional information, you can scan the QR code. Uh, it's pretty simple, just turn the, the vacuum on. And then you can uh, do your sweeping. There's additional uh, attachments in the sweep in the sweeper intervac bag. When you're done sweeping, just remove the hose and close the door. To operate the floor sweep here and just broom your effluent in here, we can lift this up and then you can sweep your effluent here. To turn it off, just close it. So the 10 inch touch panel control is for you to use to operate the systems in your coach. So those systems, uh, starting at the home page, you can uh, operate your water pump um, and view the house battery, the chassis battery, and also your tanks. You can turn on and off your lights. From this page, you can see what day it is and the time. Uh, the second icon over is the automatic gen start. So if we press the AGS, we can set up our generator to start and charge our batteries. So um, we can go into those settings just by turning it on and then going into the setup page, we can set the runtime and the quiet time here. Our, second, our third icon over is our floor heat. We can turn our floor heat on for the front, middle, or the back of the coach. Our fans, uh, which are the fans in the kitchen and the bathroom and the stool room, 
are all uh, can be operated from this screen uh, kitchen stool room bath high medium and low um, or you can use the wall switches to operate your exhaust pans you'll need to press and select which one the icon will turn red and then you can select high medium or low that's the same way with all of our controls you have to select which which room and then after you select which room you still have to turn the icon on or off when the icon is illuminated red that means it's turned on so in the hvac screen which is heating ventilation and air conditioning i can operate my furnace which is my itr oasis in order to do that and get heat i have to turn the burner on so it has to be red now my burner will turn on if i want to have hot water just from the heating elements only, I can do that through the AC elements one or two, or I can run them both, the burner and the AC elements. So I can adjust my temperatures here, whether I'm in the auto mode, heat pump mode, furnace mode, fan only mode, off or cool mode. In the auto mode, it selects heat pump, air conditioning, or furnace. If I have my RTR Oasis turned on, it does all that automatically. All I need to do is set the temperature that I want it to maintain. It will all be automatic. If I lose uh, 120 volt, my ITR Oasis will work for heat. If I have 120 volt, my heat pumps will work for heat down to about 40 degrees. So in the auto mode, there's a lot of advantages, um, but if I just want to choose my own selection for heating, I could choose heat pump or furnace, which is the ITR Oasis, um, or just fan to circulate air. I still need to select which zone that I want those to operate in, whether it's living room, kitchen, or bedroom, and I can set those individually for those zones. The next one over is Bluetooth Pair. If I want to download the app on, the, on my phone, which is called Connected, Connected Solutions, I can put that app on my phone and then I can pair my phone to the Bluetooth and all the icons that I see to control here will be on my phone. So, that's an advantage if you want to work within the Bluetooth area of the coach and not have to go back to your screen every time. You can actually see it on your phone and you can control everything from your phone. The last icon is for the lighting. The lighting controls in each of the rooms individually on and off. And after I'm done with these controls and I'm not touching the screen anymore, after about a minute and a half to two minutes, the screen will just go back to black, but all you need to do then is just touch the screen again and it will illuminate. So just touching it will illuminate it. The HVAC controls and the temperatures are all being read at these uh, small cups with the louvers in the front, middle, and back of the coach. So each one of these is a different zone for the living room. This is the kitchen and then there's one in the bedroom uh, for that zone and those temperatures are all being read here. Um, there's a small thermistor here that goes up to the air conditioner and, and the heating system is connected there as well. So that all the temperatures are being controlled by these sensors. I'm now inside the half bath. And if the camera will come around here, you can see that we have controls on the wall for the ceiling fans here and the ceiling lights. I can turn those controls on and off here. Lights on and off. I've got dual mirror for the uh, medicine cabinet. Um, sink on, off, cold and hot. Additional cabinet space here. I have my shade controls here. If I want to lower the shade or the visor. There's a 120 volt outlet here with charging ports. And I have the window I can open and close manually. In the cabinet here, 
um, above the window, I have all my breakers and all my fuses for the appliances and other devices in the coach. These are all the 120 volt breakers. The main breaker is at the bottom. I must have the main breaker on to have power to all of the others. If I happen to trip a breaker, it will be in the left position. It won't be in the on position over here. If I trip a breaker, I need to move it all the way left and then back to the right to reset it. Each appliance is labeled here, microwave, bed, bath, inverter, cooktop, floor heat, etc. So if you get a breaker that's tripped, you'll know which appliance it was that um, happened to uh, be interrupted with power. Have your floor heat indicators here. Uh, this is floor heat one and floor heat two. These are independently wired to the floor heat. So if you don't see the green light, you can come back in here and you can reset them. Um, make sure that light is on. If they need to be reset, just press the button on the right to reset your floor heat. Just to the left here, we have all the wiring coming in for the 12 volt. All of those 12 volt fuses are connected to these um, monitor panels, uh, block heaters, energy management system, HVAC controls. If any one of these fuses uh, blows, uh, we have spare fuses over to the right. Um, make sure that if you do see a fuse that uh, doesn't have power or failed, um, choose the correct amperage rating when you replace it. There are additional controls for the camera and the uh, lighting systems here. This is the Bluetooth pairing device. If for some reason you weren't able to pair your phone to the ATC uh, app, you can press the button here and you can pair it here. There are two additional fuses at the bottom here, which are labeled a um, F1 and 2, um, that are resettable. Um, so if this fuse would happen to trip, uh, the little yellow, um, the little press to touch and hold would pop out and to reset it, you just press it back in and put it back in place. There's additional cabinet space down below here in a drawer. Uh, the louvers are for a ventilator heat fan that's down here, and that fan can be turned on right at the top there where it says heat. To flush the Dometic toilet, we can do that here just by waving. It's disabled at this point. So if the wave function is disabled, we can still flush the toilet here by pressing the flush button. Once the black tank reaches 70%, there's an amber light that will illuminate here. And once the black tank is full, a red light will illuminate here and you won't be able to flush. So when you see the amber light, you want to make sure that you will be emptying your black tank soon. If you want to add water to the level inside the toilet, you can do that just by pressing and holding this button here and it'll add water to that level. So moving into the bedroom, the bedroom door uh, can be closed here. Um, in order to unlock the door to close, you have to press down uh, the release mechanism and then you can close the door. It will automatically pull the second door closed. And once it's all the way over to the left, it will lock. You can hear the lock engage at the top. Uh, to open the door, it's just the reverse of that. You press down on the release and just open the door. So we'll leave that door closed for now. Um, we're going to move on to the slide out control and wall controls. Uh, there's warnings about the slide room control. Um, just go over those. You just don't want children to be operating the slide room. The slide room in and out is controlled here. Uh, you have to press and hold the slide room control for that room to move in or out. 
once it's moved into the position that you've chose, you hold it down until it stops moving and then you release. This is the floor heat control on off and then you can set it to low, medium or high. Ceiling light control, dresser lights, courtesy lights, accent lights are all controlled here with the press of a button. You have closet space here for hanging clothes uh, left and right. You have the wardrobe AV cabinet here. So if you have an additional satellite uh, and receiver, you can mount that here or another DVD player. Um, you have an additional AB switch here. So you have to choose which connection you want to connect to, whether that's going to be the uh, ground mount satellite or overhead. And uh, here's your plugs for those connections. Below that, we have our other drawers for storage and clothes. There's uh, another, there's two emergency exits in this coach uh, at the window and at the rear door in the bath. We'll show you that one in a minute, but this one can be used for ventilation um, or and or emergency exit. That would be for ventilation. The screen is there. Um, that would be for fresh air. If you just follow the directions here uh, to exit would be to remove the screen, um, push and release the lever, and then rotate the lever and push through the slot of the frame, pushing it all the way out, and then you would escape out the window. Uh, the shades are controlled with the MCD remote, same as we did in the kitchen, except that remote is for the bedroom. The TV, uh, we have an extra plug here. There's an awning control switch here, so if we want to extend the uh, window awning, we can do that here. There's two additional drawers space there and more hanging room here. This TV operates with the same remote that we had uh, used in the kitchen. If we look at the ceiling, um, we'll see the ceiling panel uh, where the air comes out for cool and goes in. Uh, we need to um, keep those filters that are in that uh, panel clean. There's filters for the return air. So to access the filters that you need to clean, you use this tool that Numar provides, insert turn and pull down and the magnets will release. You'll see the exit air comes through these vents. That's the cool air coming down, but the return air goes up through these louvers. These can be removed and then the filter needs to be taken out and clean uh, either with a vacuum or compressed air. And then they need to be washed with uh, warm soapy water and then rinsed with clean water and then let air dry and then put back in uh, on the inside of that louver and then you push them back into place and they lock back into place. So you see you've got four filters that need to be cleaned here at this location and also in the living room locations. So keeping these filters clean is an important part of the maintenance and service for the air conditioning HVAC system. When you're done with the service and cleaning, uh, these magnets will hold it back in place. Just lift and it locks back into place. You'll notice your CO2 detector here up on the ceiling. Um, that can be tested just simply by pressing this for a couple seconds. You'll get the tone, um, a series of tones that tells you that it's operating and that the batteries are in good condition. If you don't get the tone, that means you, mean you, you will need to replace the batteries. If that doesn't help, then you'll have to replace the whole device. Moving back here to the uh, interior wall in the back, this is the sensor for the rear zone. If you like to hear music uh, from the front radio, um, you can just turn these speakers on and then you'll have the radio coming through in the bedroom here on the overhead speakers. Turn them off if you don't want to hear the radio back here, but you do need to have the radio on in the front. Uh, we have additional storage space here in the overhead, and the lighting controls 
are just above the, the panel as you're laying in bed. You can control these um, lighting controls in the bedroom, um, passenger, reading lights, ceiling lights um, are here. On each nightstand, there's additional storage space here. And located on the inside back is the 120 volt outlet with charging USB charging plugs on both sides. There is an open access so that you can plug into the 120 volt and the cord will come out here. Um, so you don't need to leave the door open for the cord to be plugged in. You can just route it through here. The bed is, the bed has a lift that you can lift up in the back so you can access your additional chairs. And there's storage here. Um, these bed panels have a small hole that you can grab a hold of and lift the panel out to access the controls underneath the bed. Um, the motor and those controls are all there to move the slide room in and out. When you're done um, with the bed lift, you can just push down to close it. Uh, moving into the bathroom, we have the same lock and release mechanism in the pocket doors we did in the bedroom door. Just move it over and it will lock into place. The door's locked now to release, just press down can open the door and you'll hear it lock back into place when it's open. As we enter the, the rear bathroom, we have the dryer and the washer. The dryer is 120 volts, so you'll need to be plugged in. So is the washing machine. Um, there's a notice on the side here. Uh, the notice is important. You want to remove the outside drain cap before operating the washing machine. In other words, the water that's exited out of here will go in the gray tank. And if the gray tank uh, becomes full, um, it actually starts to fill up the exit water lines and you don't want water coming up in your shower. So you want, just want to make sure that your gray tank um, uh, lever is open and to the exit uh, for that water to be discharged out of the washing machine. Uh, moving into the bathroom here, you've got dual mirrors in the overhead, dual sinks. Um, all of our controls for the bathroom lighting, um, cosmetic lighting, ceiling, um, and our aquamizer are here. If we're going to use the aquamizer and we turn it on, uh, the light will come on in the aquamizer. What that does is in the shower then, there's a little blue light that comes on and the aquamizer helps you save fresh water by recirculating. What it does is it recirculates the water that's coming into the shower um, by turning this lever to the recirculating position until this turns red. Then we know the water's hot. Then we can turn the water on and then it will come out our selection of either the handheld or the overhead. So this means that it's cold. Once it turns red, then we can turn this and select uh, whether we want the overhead uh, and hot or cold coming out of either one of, of these. Um, basically what this does is it recycles the water into the fresh tank so we don't waste water, especially when we're dry camping. We want to save that water. Um, there's a seat here if you'd like to fold it up or down. Once we're done with the shower, we want to make sure when we close the door, even though it has a magnetic uh, uh, close, that we lock the door um, before we travel. There is a floor heat uh, switch here. Floor heat turns on and off here. Once we're finished with the aquamizer, we can turn that off. Um, we have high, medium, low um, uh, for our ventilation fan here in the bathroom. Um, that fan can be turned on and off here. 
And now you can see the fan being turned off will close automatically. Our Dometic toilet uh, flush switch is identical to the one in the half bath. Um, if the wave function isn't uh, turned on, you can just press the flush. And to add water in the bowl, to raise the level of the water in the bowl, just press the add water button if we'd like to do that. This is the exit door that we saw from the outside. If there's an emergency and we need to exit the coach, uh, we can get out of the coach here. Um, we want to unlock the door. Once we unlock, uh, make sure this one's unlocked as well. Uh, we open the door um, and pull this panel off and you'll see a ladder. Uh, that ladder uh, will go down and extend by itself once we release the Velcro strap. We just flip the ladder down and now we can exit the coach uh, in an emergency. Uh, grab the handle and step down. If we've exited the coach and whatever issue it was, we wanna put the ladder back in place, just lift the ladder up I can do it from the inside, lift up. The ladder will retract back in place. And then I grab my Velcro strap, put my Velcro strap back in place. And then we put the door and the magnets will hold the door where it was. So once we stow our ladder, we can close our door again, lock it, and our door. Just above that, we have the window open and close here. Um, the shades are operated here with the wall switches, shade and visor up and down. Just to the right of those controls, we have another storage area. At the back of the coach, we have a full closet. You'll notice uh, to the right in the corner, uh, we have our safe. Uh, there's a key. Uh, for the safe, and the safe comes with a preloaded uh, number that you can use to open, um, but you should change it to your own uh, passcode so that only you know how to get in your safe. The lighting controls for the entire coach are back here in the cabinet. Um, those lighting controls, uh, if, the, if you open this door, you'll see green LED lights. Every time you turn on a light, no matter where in the coach, a green LED light will come on to show that circuit is engaged. Uh, there is a light here in the overhead. You can turn on and off. There's two lights. The doors latch at the bottom and top. This access panel and this floor panel are access to the rear engine. We won't remove those, but the black tabs uh, can be removed and there's screws that come out and those panels uh, can be removed to, to access the engine compartment, uh, typically by a mechanic. These overhead louvers will need to be removed just like the ones in the bedroom and the living room and cleaned as often as you need to keep them so that they're breathable. Um, if you run your air conditioner a lot, change them and clean them often. At the base of the sink, um, you have more storage drawers, another louver for your heat. Um, each water line is labeled red and blue for hot and cold respectively. There are additional plugs here. Um, so you can plug in 120-volt um, devices here in the, in the bathroom. And we talked about the controls for the floor heat and the lighting are, are right on the wall.